One year ago, Jägermeister challenged me to build a custom loop gaming PC cooled entirely by their own tasty beverage. So I did. It was somehow beautiful and absurd all at once, and I thought for sure I would never take on such a ridiculous project ever again. But several months ago, those antler adorning lunatics came back with another challenge for me. To integrate their new ice cold shot dispensing tap machine into the PC's water cooling loop. The idea filled me with intrigue. If their machine was capable of taking their sweet brown elixir to freezing temperatures, what effect would it have on a running system? How long would the cooling effects last? And could it help me break Kingpin's 3D Mark World record now that he was out of EVGA graphics cards? While I was desperate for answers, fusing two machines from different worlds was a fool's errand. An impossible undertaking only ever seen in the movies or from case modders with more skills than me. My only experience with ice cold shot dispensing tap machines was consuming ice cold shots responsibly. I was intimately familiar with how to use such a device, but needed to understand its inner workings. A threaded adapter screws onto a freshly opened bottle of Jägermeister, which is then placed into an inlet at the top of the machine. Gravity feeds the beverage into the internal tank below, where it's cooled by a thermoelectric cooling system, which operates according to the Peltier effect. The Peltier effect is a process by which heat transfer occurs between two electrical junctions, once voltage is applied across joined conductors to create an electric current. When the current flows through each junction, heat is stored at one junction and removed from the other where cooling occurs. Within a couple of hours of powering on the tap unit, this advanced cooling technology drops the liquid from room temp to a remarkably frigid temperature of minus 18 degrees Celsius, at which point it's ready for dispensing ice cold shots of Jägermeister from the spout. While the liquid inside the tank remains chilly when idle, the Peltier cooling system isn't exactly designed for the constant flow rate of a PC loop, so we're less likely to see lasting cooling effects, but rather a quick burst of cooling, somewhat akin to the nitrous oxide boost of a souped up car. However short-lived, this could potentially increase the clock speeds of our CPU and graphics card for an ephemeral performance bump that we'll test for later. Now, as I explained in last year's video, there's not much harm in running Jägermeister through a PC loop if it's only done for a brief period of time and you clean all the parts thoroughly afterwards. Otherwise, the alcohol can attack the surface of any acrylic parts, leaving cracks and microfractures in its wake. So, distilled water it is. However, therein lies a different problem. With the absence of any alcohol, and therefore ethanol, which has an extremely low freezing point, our distilled water will literally freeze in the tap machine if it's left idle too long but release it into the loop before that point, and our cooling potential is compromised considerably compared to what ice-cold Jägermeister can achieve. The solution? Propylene glycol, commonly known as antifreeze. A 35 to 65% mix of propylene glycol and distilled water will keep our liquid from freezing over. One caveat is that glycol has notably less thermal conductance than water, so the PC will probably run slightly warmer when the tap is disconnected, but the ability to reach freezing temperatures in the tap unit will more than make up for that, given the task at hand. Since glycols are stronger reactants than water, they also speed up corrosion, so it's critical that we add an anti-corrosive additive to the loop, which I forgot to do, but I will get on that right after I make this video. With our first problem solved, next I had to find a way to physically connect the tap machine to the PC loop. Fortunately, I had a plan. Unfortunately, that plan did not work, but let's discuss it anyway. I decided that running soft PVC tubing between the PC and tap unit with quick disconnect or QDC fittings would be the simplest and most flexible solution. This would allow me to easily connect and disconnect the tap machine from the PC freely without spilling or the hassle of having to drain the loop. Setting this up on the PC side was the easy part. By removing the hardline tube that ran between the front radiator and the chassis distro plate, I was able to rebridge the gap with a soft tube assembly consisting of a ball valve and dual Y fittings with QDC male fittings attached to each. Depending on whether the valve was open or closed, it would allow normal flow of the loop when the PC was isolated or direct liquid through the tap machine when connected. So far, so good. But trying to sort out the tap machine connections had me questioning my manhood. The first step was to drill a hole into the glass bottle for routing the inlet tube. So I grabbed a power drill and immediately f***ed up the bottle. The glass had cracked in spectacular fashion for one simple reason. I hadn't properly cooled the drill bit when in use. First time drilling glass. A few YouTube tutorials later, my second attempt went a lot smoother by water cooling my hardware, using a higher quality drill bit, and stabilizing my tool for added precision, I cut a hole cleaner than Linus's face pre-2020. 
The inlet tube fits snugly through the opening, but I reinforced the connection with silicone sealant for good measure, before adding a female QDC to the other end of the tube. Additional caulking was also needed between the bottle adapter and tank inlet, which wouldn't have an airtight seal otherwise. Ideally, I would have seated the bottle first before sealing around it, but the tap unit's design leaves virtually no clearance to access the bottleneck. So instead, I had to apply sealant to the adapter and inlet separately before connecting them and pray for the best. Connecting the outlet tube was an easy process of sliding it over the spout and fixing it with a zip tie, along with restraining the release lever to keep the loop open at all times. Slap on one last QDC fitting and we were ready for first launch. But I was skeptical. I had some concerns that the nozzle's inner diameter of just five to six millimeters would create too much pressure in the loop once the pump was active, causing my shoddy silicone barrier to give way, which it did. Everything seemed fine at first when hooking up the machines, with the Y-fitting assembly directing flow to the tap unit as intended. But mere seconds later, unholy amounts of fluid began backing up at the Achilles heel of my creation. In its reflection, I saw a broken man, forsaken by the world around him and robbed of his will to live. Going back to the drawing board with the painful lessons I had learned from my first attempt, it was clear that the tap machine's enclosure and dispensing nozzle were limiting factors. But stripping down the unit to its bare bones revealed some promising discoveries. For example, removing the outer casing takes the bottle adapter section with it, exposing an inlet that leads directly to the fluid tank. And as fate should have it, the hole is threaded at a quarter inch, which fits a standard jean a quarter inch compression fitting perfectly. If the loop leaks a second time around, it won't be from here again. Also, with that bulky nozzle assembly removed, we've also ditched the narrow pipe inside of it that was way too restrictive for our loop. And now we're left with a quarter inch outlet. However, unlike the inlet, this is a male thread, so a standard water cooling fitting won't work, but we can still slide our flex tubing over the threads and cinch it down with a hose clamp. This is already looking much more promising. And when I first set out on this journey, I really wanted to keep the tap machine intact with the bottle on display because it looks so cool. But at the end of the day, it's function over form. And Jägermeister said I just had to connect the unit to the PC. It didn't say it had to be pretty. I really hope it doesn't leak this time though, cause now we have exposed electrical wires everywhere. Should be fine. Challenge accepted, challenge complete. I had my doubts, but by God, I had done it. The final loop was complete, and not a leak in sight. A wave of calm washed over me as I stood back to marvel at my creation. This wasn't just your ordinary custom liquid-cooled tap machine-powered computer, but a symbol of my tenacity, bravery, and beguiling appearance. With my electric beast in her final form, only one lingering question remained. What effect did the surge of Sub-Zero liquid have on the PC's performance, if any at all? Curious to know the maximum cooling potential of the tap unit, my initial test was to determine the lowest CPU and GPU load temps it could achieve when the coolant was its coldest, which of course would be immediately after hooking up the tap to the PC. First, I put a full load on the CPU and GPU by running stress tests of Cinebench and MSI combustor simultaneously, then allowed time for both components to heat soak before logging temperatures. The 5950X floated at 61 degrees Celsius, while the RTX 3080 danced around 57C. Then I simply piped in the tap machine and observed. Within moments, the CPU dropped 13 degrees to 48C, while the GPU plummeted 20 degrees to 37C, soaking in all the dividends of the icy onslaught. All good things must come to an end though, and in this case, they came quickly. The chilly temps only held up for a few seconds before slowly climbing back to their pre-tap temperatures. While this type of short-term cooling doesn't offer any meaningful performance gains in most real-world applications, it could impact the score of a typical benchmark run that only lasts a few minutes. With Jägermeister's tap machine, the 5950X delivered a Cinebench multi-thread score of 26,523, a small but measurable 3% uplift over the tapless CPU. This tracks as we saw average temperatures drop by 10 degrees during the brief run, boosting the average core frequency from 3937 to 4,020 megahertz. Similarly, the RTX 3080's 4K benchmark score in Combustor went from 3470 to 3581 for a 3.5% gain, netting us two extra frames per second. Yay. During this test, the tapped GPU dropped 11 degrees on average, lifting the average core clock speed from 1950 to 1980 megahertz. Now, overall, this is not a game changer by any stretch. 
but the multiple tests I ran did return repeatable results, with the tap system always coming out on top, demonstrating that this utterly ridiculous mod actually provides a limited yet measurable advantage. It goes without saying, but the next time someone confronts you with an identically specced PC is yours featuring an integrated tap machine and they challenge you to a benchmark battle, as people do, you better have a few tricks up your sleeve. As for Jägermeister, <laughs> well, you thought you could stump me, but I can't be stumped. I am unstumpable to the highest degree of unstumpability. How unstumptuous of you. That being said, I welcome a good challenge, and I appreciate the opportunity that Jägermeister has given me to reassert my dominance today. A toast to all the winners who made it to the end of this video. May your frame rates be high and your temperatures low. Cheers. <laughs>